An incredible scientific discovery has been made in Florida's homeless camps. The once extinct needle cap butterfly is now thriving in Florida's homeless camps. On today's video, we're going to learn about the Atala butterfly. Now, this is a rare butterfly that exists only in the United States in the southern tip of Florida. It is a rare and beautiful butterfly that has been mistaking the needle caps left behind at homeless camps for other butterflies. It was once considered an extinct species, but thanks to homeless people leaving needle caps at homeless camp and plenty of fertilizer on the ground, which has helped us plants that they need to survive. Today, the Tala butterfly, AKA the needle cap butterfly, has become a normal sight in Florida. What was once considered a rare and almost extinct species for a while, today the needle cap butterfly is flourishing in Florida's homeless camps. The butterfly is very sensitive to chemical fertilizer, but when it receives pure organic fertilizer, aka plenty of human feces and plenty of orange needle caps on the ground, they're many times confused and congregate in homeless camps around needle caps, thinking that they're they will actually be around other butterflies. So what has happened is that this particular plant right here, this is called the blue mist flower, which grows out of these abandoned homeless camps where there are usually thousands of needle caps scattered, has become a gathering place for these butterflies and homeless camps. And today, these once extinct butterflies have become a normal sight in Florida's homeless camps. January is the perfect time to see the Atala butterfly. This rare tropical butterfly was believed to be extinct. But in January, in the state of Florida, you can find these butterflies outside of homeless camps on blue mist flowers. Here we have three specimens of these rare tropical butterflies. Now these butterflies in 1939 were believed to be extinct completely in Florida and today thanks to homeless people clearing out brushland in the middle of wooded areas and leaving plenty of organic fertilizer aka human feces this species is once again abundant and its range was once believed to be limited just to southeast Florida today can be found all along southwest Florida and even as far north as Pasco and Hernando County. Despite these butterflies being considered rare, during certain parts of the year, they are abundant in Florida's homeless camps. The perfect conditions exist, trails, clearings, and of course, plenty of natural fertilizer for these plants, like the bloomest flower, to have plenty of nectar, which is food available for these butterflies to thrive. Now, this butterfly really depends on a plant called the Conti plant, which is only endemic to certain places of Florida, but it also takes a lot more than just simply a few plants for the survival of these plants. It takes somebody to nurture these wild areas, open up trails, have clearings, and plenty of natural fertilizer. That thankfully the homeless population of Florida of nearly 100,000 people provides plenty of. If it wasn't for Florida's homeless population, this extinct at one point butterfly species wouldn't be where it's at today. Its range has expanded throughout the entirety of the state of Florida. And while many people go to the gardens of universities or planetariums to find these rare subtropical butterflies, the best place to find these butterflies is at a very stinky homeless camp somewhere outside of a large city. Finding the right homeless camp, however, can be difficult. So on today's video, I'm going to let you know the exact type of homeless camp where you can find this rare tropical butterfly. This beauty of nature, while rare in Florida, is abundant in homeless camps. Thanks to the habit of homeless people of clearing out patches of land in the middle of the woods and then bringing in plenty of natural fertilizers, these butterflies have been able to thrive in what was believed to be almost a guaranteed extinction for the species. I recently spent some time talking to Misty. Now, she's a professor at the University of Tampa. And she believes it's not just that the homeless people leave the perfect fertilizer behind and clear out areas for the perfect habitat of the nectar producing plants. But if you take a close look at a needle cap, it is almost size, shape and color to the red abdomen of the butterfly. And many times the butterflies confuse needle caps on the floor 
to other butterflies. And it isn't so much that the fertilizer, the human feces on the ground, creates the perfect conditions for the plants needed for the butterfly survival, but the fact that the butterflies many times mistake the needle caps for butterflies and stick around these homeless camps because there are so many needle caps on the ground. Now Misty, we're gonna call her Misty because she doesn't wanna say her real name, has told me that they've actually done experiments where they've pooped in their gardens and left needle caps behind, and they've noticed that it really does attract more of these butterflies. Simply, the butterflies are only looking out for the bright orange dots, and if the needle caps are on the ground, many times they confuse the needle caps for other butterflies, and they'll stick around the area. With enough human fertilizer and enough needle caps on the ground, you can attract this beautiful butterfly to your backyard. Now Misty told me that while this is definitely a interesting scientific theory and discovery, and that their tests conclude that in fact if you have these conditions in your property, you're more likely to attract these wild and beautiful rare subtropical butterflies, that for her to actually bring this type of information to a realistic setting of science, you know, it would be considered laughable. So she said, while the experiment does seem to be true, she said as long as there are homeless camps in the state of Florida, that the survival of this species will be guaranteed for many years to come. Unfortunately, today, the state of Florida is going on an all-out war on homeless camps. And while many times the needles are collected, the needle caps are left behind, and that could prove to be the future of this species. As the state of Florida sets out to destroy homeless camps in the entirety of the state, this newly created habitat for this rare species is now in danger. See, it really is the combination of the needle caps and the human feces that has created the perfect conditions for these once rare butterflies to flourish. Today, with Florida's war on homelessness, this species could in the future be extinct again. While many people have started to throw needle caps in their gardens and hope that that combined with human feces will attract these butterflies, if you live in a suburban or urban setting, chances are these butterflies are not going to find your poop and needle caps. You actually need a wooded area. Many times these homeless camps are many acres and expansive. And only homeless people have enough time to destroy or devote that much land to a particular purpose of land clearing and then accumulation of human feces. Most of us simply do not have enough time to accumulate that much feces and clear out that much brush land in a wooded area, which means that the only hope of this particular species, the needle cap butterfly, is that Florida stops going after homeless camps, something that the government will absolutely not do. And even people who have tested out the theory of the needle caps and poops in their suburban neighborhoods in Tampa are afraid to share the results of their experiments with their colleagues because they think it's a laughable theory. On top of that, they've told me that leaving needle caps and poop in their backyard has really upset a lot of people in their community. So despite the fact that the needle cap butterfly depends on human feces and junkies needle caps in order to have a flourishing environment a species that went extinct practically these things disappeared from florida if it wasn't for a population in the caribbean islands that survived we wouldn't have this species today in florida today it is a thriving species in florida's homeless camps and it doesn't matter how hard scientists try to recreate the right conditions you're more likely to find these needle cap butterflies in their natural habitat, a homeless camp off of US-19, than you ever will in the gardens of universities. All right, everybody, that is everything you need to know about Florida's needle cap butterfly, AKA the Atala butterfly. These butterflies are really rare to see in Florida, and I tell you, the only place I've really ever seen them is in abandoned homeless camps. But what's crazy is that if you get the right types of flowers growing in these homeless camps, you can find hundreds of these butterflies. When I first shared these images on the internet, people were like, where on earth are you seeing this many of these butterflies? And then I looked around and I realized that the reason these butterflies were hanging around these homeless camps is because there were so many needle caps on the ground 
and their shape and color is like literally identical to the butterfly. And many times once they abandon the homeless camp, the grass grows in, you get all these wildflowers to start to grow. And that is the nectar. And underneath the nectar, you have all of the fertilizer, the natural organic fertilizer. And it's like the perfect environment for these butterflies to be in. So while it is kind of a horrendous thing, it does seem to be the best habitat for these butterflies to flourish in. This is a recently abandoned homeless camp. This is the perfect environment. All the conditions are right here for the wildflowers to grow to attract these beautiful butterflies. This abandoned homeless camp right here will be a perfect nursery for hundreds of Atala butterflies, AKA the bottle cap butterflies. And you're going back to these scientists that I've been sharing this information with and people that worked at universities and professors and stuff. And they're telling me, well, there's a lot of logic to what I'm saying. It's not really the type of thing you can write down in a scientific book. It's just the type of discovery that is best left unwritten. And hopefully there'll be enough abandoned homeless camps in Florida to sustain this species. They're telling me that the world really isn't ready to hear that needle junkies leaving feces and needle caps on the ground has practically saved a species of butterfly. Now, what she told me that it would be very difficult for scientists here in Florida to take my advances in science seriously. She told me that there were some German scientists that were visiting them. And they were just fascinated with my discovery, mostly that an animal would be able to adapt to just a horrendous human environment is something that they say only happens once in a billion years. That for the most part, when humans create these types of environments, it only leads to destruction and to think that, you know, they're looking for this missing link of evolution of an animal that is actually able to adapt to changing climates and changing habitats and to find a needle cap butterfly that is able to survive because of homeless people leaving behind feces and needle caps in a homeless camp to them was like finding i don't know like the missing link for their theories of evolution and, and evolving and that well i don't support those theories they, they, she told me that these german scientists were just absolutely thrilled by the notion that the needle cap butterfly survival depends on an environment that humans have created they're telling me that this is like something like that would only happen once in a billion years that nothing like this exists on earth it's an absolute scientific breakthrough but of course i guess they're more open-minded in europe for example and perhaps if they take these discoveries to europe there there'll be much more potential to a receptive scientific world. See, they're explaining to me that the scientific world doesn't just take facts for facts. It has to somehow match one of their agendas or preconceived ideas of how things work. And many times the scientific world is like they're wearing a blindfold because some things are very obvious, but if it doesn't match the particular criteria of the theories and ideologies that they want to promote, then simply they don't address these facts. But in the case of the needle cap butterfly, this is definitely a scientific breakthrough unlike no other. Some European scientists are going to consider this something like a monumental moment in science, a moment where an animal has adapted or evolved to adapt to human created habitats, something that is absolutely rare beyond the domestication of a few species. But that again is all clouded by the notion that here in the state of Florida, the idea of scientists leaving needle caps and poop in their backyard to see if they can attract butterflies is not going to fly very well with their HOAs or their colleagues. To them, it's a laughable theory, and while they have confirmed that it is probably very true, it's not the type of thing they really want to put into a student's textbook. Florida's needle cap butterfly story of survival from extinction is definitely something that you're going to be reading about in scientific magazines soon, as throughout the world, scientists will debate whether the theories planted are true or false.
Now, personally, I don't believe none of this scientific back and forth because at the end of the day, they're trying to grab the information and make it match their theories. Me, I just like to see things for what they are. It's a beautiful butterfly and they like homeless camps. What's wrong with that?